Hey, what's up you guys? John here from Old Running Farm. Thanks for joining us. In today's video, we are going to give you the seven things you need to get started with alpacas. Let's get going. Number one is going to be land and fencing. So the first thing you need to get started with alpacas is land. Um, according to the internet and everybody, basically, you can have up to five alpacas on a good acre of land. Now what we, what we mean by good acre is, does it have nice, healthy grass that they can graze on? Is it nice, you know, if you have an acre of mud, that's not gonna do real well. So if you have poor grass or, you know, limited leafy growth on the ground, you can probably have up to three per acre and you'll just need to supplement with more hay. The, the other thing you'll need is fencing. So we have this really simple three rail fence that we set up. Alpacas do not test fences. You don't need electricity. You don't need anything crazy. The fence is mainly to keep other animals out rather than to keep them in. Like I said, they're not gonna try to run and jump over the fence. You know, they're not goats. They're, you know, prey animals. So they prefer, they feel comfort inside of a fence. So the other thing about fencing it's helpful to have as many entrances into the pasture as possible. We have three eight foot wide entrances directly from the outside into the pasture. Um, then we have the entrance from the barn and then we have a little section split off so that we can keep them contained right inside the barn. Number two is going to be breed, gender, and the number of alpacas you should get. So when it comes to the number of alpacas, uh, they are herd animals, which means they do not do well when they're alone. So you should never just get one alpaca. They will be very unhappy, they'll have health problems, and they may die prematurely. So it's always best. The number that has been prescribed to us and we've heard a lot of the times is three. And the reason why is if you get two and one of them gets sick and you know passes away prematurely, then you're stuck with one and you have to kind of rush to find another one to add. If you start with three, you know, God forbid the worst happens and one of them passes away, they still have company and they're still able to be part of a herd and so they should still be able to thrive like that while you try to find them a third friend. You also wanna make sure that males and females are kept separate because those boys are no good when it comes to those girls and they will try to mate continuously um, and that's no good for the ladies. Um, you also want to make sure that they're not only separate, but that their fences are separated so that they can't touch noses, they can't do anything, because that'll just make the boys go a little bit crazy, and again, no good for anybody. So there's two different kinds of alpacas, wakayas, which are the big fluffy ones, and surreys, which are the ones that have uh, almost dreadlocks hanging down. Um, there's really no health differences between the two. It's just like a genetic thing. They have different kinds of fur, or they have different kinds of fiber. Um, we have found that uh, people, for the most part, like the wakayas. Their fiber is easier to work with. Um, so, you know, it's all kind of about what you like to look at. Um, our first alpacas we got from a breeder who specifically did surreys. So our first three girls were surreys, and the last two we got were wakayas. Um, so. It's all personal taste at that point. Number three, barn or shelter. So the next thing you'll need is shelter. Alpacas do really well in all kinds of environments. You know, they're from uh, the mountains in South America, uh, so they can deal with the cold, they can deal with the warmth. Um, so they just need a three-sided shelter that works out just fine. Um, and you're gonna need about 40 square feet per alpaca. So we have five, our shelter is 10 by 20, so it's 200 square feet works out perfectly um, and then the other thing that you want to have is somewhere where you can corral them because later on we're going to talk about medication and they get spooked really easily so it's good to have some place where they can't run away from you because they will if you want to learn more about how we built our shelter uh, we have a whole series of videos dedicated to that and we also have a very recent video where we talked about the kind of bedding that we have in here definitely check that out I'll put the links up here and in the description below Number four, food, hay, and water. Next is food, hay, and water. So we have 
right here, what we feed them is a mixture of little granules. They only get like maybe a cup of this per day. Um, you don't want to give them too much because they have trouble digesting it. Their main source of nutrients is hay and grass if you have it in the pasture. So this is a mixture of two different kinds. We have textured pellets and regular pellets. And they are big fans. This is Mocha, our youngest. And as you can see, they also really like hay. So the other interesting thing about alpacas is they only have teeth on the bottom and they have a hard palate on the top. So it's perfect for, uh, they hold the grass and then they break it down at the bottom so they don't tear the grass up, they uh, chop it. So we haven't mowed in here in a couple of months. They do a really good job of keeping the grass down. So the hay that we get is called second cut hay. And so when uh, hay growers grow it, the first cut is generally the least nutritious um, and alpacas do best with second cut hay. Um, we get ours from Vermont, which is a couple states north of us because that's what they like and they won't eat the local stuff very spoiled ladies over here. Um, and so they basically, they have access to the hay whenever they want. We have a little hay feeder out here that we built. Um, and yeah, other than that, they, they supplement that with the grass and they get a little bit of the grain in the morning. And so we have these uh, hanging buckets that we have. They have a flat back, so they hang against the studs and just these little hangers, give them plenty of fresh water every day. That's pretty much it. Number five, dealing with poop. So alpacas, like everybody else, poop, and they poop all the time. Um, and so you want to make sure you keep this nice and clean, especially in the barn. Um, and it's it's really easy to take care of. Uh, we just get this little black garden shovel. I think we got a or garden rake. We got at Walmart, just a couple bucks, and this old shovel we have laying around. Mocha was just Whoa. <laughs> So alpaca manure is a great soil amendment so we always pick it up we throw it in a bucket and then we have a pile out back um, and we've used it in all of our gardens and it's done a great job um, giving a little fertilizer, a little amendment to our soil. Um, it's not hot manure, so you can put it directly on your plants, directly in your soil. You don't need to have it compost or anything like that. You can even do things like let it soak in water and then you have what they call alpaca tea and you can spray that. Um, we haven't done that, but lots of people do. So, you know, that's one of the things that you can use to kind of help the... So we just keep it... Yeah. Poop. Poop. Number six, shearing, teeth, and toes. So the next thing that comes up is shearing. They need to get shorn once a year so that they don't have, you know, their big winter coats over summer when it gets really hot. So you'll want to make sure you line up a shearer because a lot of times they book months and months in advance. So you want to make sure you're on their schedule. And while they're shearing, they'll also check their teeth and their toes to see if they need to get cut. They actually get their teeth filed so that they're not sticking out too far from their face. And their teeth just, their, their toes just need to get clipped, just like any kind of other toenails, to make sure that they can walk nice and straight. So something we might go into more detail about in a future video is what to do with the fiber after the fact. Um, but you can do some Googling in your area and look for fiber mills. Um, alpaca fiber is a really, really in-demand fiber because it's so nice and soft and fluffy. Um, so there's a fiber mill near us that would purchase the raw fiber directly from us and we didn't have to pay anything to get it done. And that basically comped the cost of the shearing. So that worked out pretty nicely. Um, and we also got Macy, uh, our gray wakaya, uh, we got her fiber processed with a little bit of Linda, the white one there, um, and we were able to sell that yarn for 15 bucks uh, per skein, and that was actually, uh, it was, I wouldn't say it was a profit, 
but it certainly helped offset the cost. And number seven, the least favorite of everybody, medication. So the last and least fun part of uh, owning alpacas is the medications. So in areas where you have white And we're back. <laughs> in areas where you have white-tailed deer, they can give uh, something called meningeal worm to slugs, and then slugs will go into your pasture and leave trails, and then the alpacas can pick it up. I'm not 100% sure of exactly how they get it, but I know that if they get meningeal worm, it's almost an assurance that they will pass away. It's really bad. It's a really insidious disease, and, it, and alpacas are very stoic animals, so they do not show signs of stress when they're, when they're having problems, when they're having medical issues. Um, so it's really important that you have a plan to proactively keep them vaccinated from it. Or I, I'm not, I don't think vaccinate is the right word, but... Um, so you use either ivermectin or dectomax. Um, and there's a lot of debate online, I'm not gonna get into it about you know which is better, um, but they always say you wanna give it to them at least every 30 days. So we're on a 28 day uh, cycle. So basically every four weeks uh, they get shots. The amount that they get is based on their weight. Um, and just that way you make sure they're, they're always on cycle and they hopefully don't get this terrible disease. I'll link some resources down in the description below that give some more information on that. Um, and also one of the things that we'll mention at the end, there's a lot of really good Facebook groups out there uh, for alpaca owners that have all types of resources. Do your research. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. If you have any questions, you can leave them below in the comments or you can find us on Instagram at Old Reading Farm. Feel free to DM us if you have any questions. We're very happy to help. We would also highly suggest that you go check out some groups on Facebook. Um, there's lots of information out there. Do your research, um, and I'm sure you'll have a great time. They're great animals, they're fun to have, and they're very nice. Thank you very much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Please give this video a like, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, and as always, please subscribe. Thanks for stopping by. Bye!